An American Pickle. This is a film starring Seth Rogen in which he plays two roles. The first one being a Jewish factory worker in 1919 who falls into a, a vat of pickles and is brined for a hundred years, is pulled out of the vat, in present-day America and meets up with his great-great-grandson, also played by Seth Rogen, and hilarity ensues. This premise is insane. And the only reason I watched this thing, other than the fact that I was bored and just wanted to find another movie to review, was the fact that I'm, I'm a big Seth Rogen fan. I think, and this statement will probably drive some people crazy, I think Seth Rogen is one of the best comedic actors of all time. And I stress that that two-word phrase, comedic actors. No, he doesn't have the comedy chops necessarily of maybe like a Chris Farley, nor does he have the dramatic range of a Robin Williams. And yet, I think he, every time I see him in a movie, he's always really likable. And you look at his filmography, he's made some of the best films, comedies and dramas. He's been a part of some of the best movies of the last 15 years. 50-50, This is the End, Steve Jobs, The Disaster Artist, super bad. Like this is a guy with a really great understanding of what makes comedy work. And I think he's a very good dramatic actor as well. And that's where I'll get into the biggest positive for this movie. This is maybe his best performance. I don't know if it's my favorite. I thought he was amazing in 50-50. That's one of my favorite movies of all time with Joseph Gordon-Levitt. And I thought he was excellent in Steve Jobs. Thought he should have gotten an Oscar nomination for that. But he has to play dual, dual roles here. And that's a very difficult task. And he commits 100% to both these roles. And, and yes, there's a lot of funny moments in this movie, but he plays it really straight. And I think he shows once again that he's a very talented actor, both dramatically and comedically. I root for the guy quite a bit, and I think he's excellent in this. I think this movie is well-directed. I, I think that it borrows heavily at points from Taika Waititi. I, I, it kind of looked at points like one of his movies. You have moments where you have close-ups on, on actors' faces, just these, these stilted one-shots. You have these wide crowd shots. At points, it feels often very like fantastical and whimsical, like some of Taika's movies have a tendency to do. But I'm not complaining. I mean, the, we're talking about one of my favorite directors here, and even a ripoff version of that is still well directed. This movie never bored me. It kept me entertained all the way through. It made me laugh. There are some hysterically funny parts in this, and I don't know if that's the script or if it's Seth Rogen's delivery. I don't know. Maybe, maybe he just fits into my comedy sensibilities because he'll deliver a line that will just make me laugh really hard, and he'll deliver it in a way that sometimes is very deadpan, sometimes it's very over the top, but he never ceases to entertain me, and I think that overall, uh, this film's script is carried by his performance, and the film made me laugh quite a bit. One of the strangest things about this movie is that it is incredibly relevant. There's some allegories made to the culture that we live in right now, the political climate that we live in right now, and yet... Unlike a lot of movies, some that I've talked about on here, like The Five Bloods, it never feels obnoxious with its messages. It is surprisingly subtle, which you would think that a comedy, uh, of all things, would be more over the top and more hit you over the head with its message, but this movie doesn't really, and I give it a lot of credit for that. I think there is a sincere heart to it, and even though Seth Rogen didn't write this movie, he has that theme, it seems, in a lot of his films, whether it be movies he stars in or writes, that all his comedies have a, a good heart to them. They have solid character, and it makes them entertaining to watch even in the moments in which you aren't laughing. You go back and you watch 50-50 or Superbad or Pineapple Express or The Disaster Artist. Those are all very funny movies that at their core are about people, and they have good characters, and you enjoy watching them on screen. This is no exception. I do like this movie. I think it's better than it has any right to be, but it is seriously flawed, and I'll start off with the main one. Look, this movie's premise is insane. And you know what? For a whole lot of it, it was losing me and then winning me back and then losing me and then winning me back again. And every time I was like, man, I'm about to pull out of this. Uh, I was like, wow, this is, uh, this is funny again. I'm, I'm interested again. In the third act, it stretches that suspension of disbelief just a little bit too far. And, and there's lapses in judgment by characters. And there's certain things that happen where you go, Okay, even, even in the heightened reality that this world lives in, this doesn't make a lick of sense. And the biggest problem to me, while I brought up Seth Rogen's performance, while I brought up the fact that the movie does win you over a fair amount, it is very uneven. It's very difficult to get a gauge on what kind of movie this is trying to be, because it starts off as kind of this uh, a very sincere 
allegory for the American dream, almost a drama with this, this weird premise at points. Then it becomes wacky, zany comedy. Then it becomes heartfelt dramedy about two guys and, and them trying to find themselves again, trying to find purpose. It's very all over the place. And, and that is a complaint, but I got to say, it, for a film this all over the place, it shouldn't work as well as it does. But there is a, a real charm to it. You enjoy watching it that despite how heavily flawed it is, I couldn't help but come out of it and be like, you know, I enjoyed that. I would even watch this again. Like, it's such an insane premise that it, I could see this easily becoming like a cult film that was released during the during the pandemic that a lot of people go back on years from now and say, man, you got to see this really quirky Seth Rogen movie. It ain't perfect, but there's a lot of likable things about it. And I would, I would recommend you watch it. It's on HBO Max. If you have an account there, log in and give this a watch. I, I recommend an American Pickle. Flawed, but charming, uneven, but hilarious. I give an American Pickle a 7 out of 10. Way better than it had any right to be. And this is why I watch movies. And this is why even movies like The Tax Collector, like Artemis Fowl, that I came into thinking, I, I don't know about this. I don't think this is going to be very good. It's why I watch them. Because you never know when a film is going to surprise you. And I... I would, would categorize this as a genuine surprise. Good work. All right, you can follow me on Twitter at Castellani2014. Please click that subscribe button, click that like button. Oh my God, we're so close to a thousand followers. I can taste it. Thank you very much for watching. Peace and happiness. I'll see you later.